By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. Now, that's a, that's a short little sentence in the book of Hebrews chapter five, but that's not all the Bible says about Enoch. And really what we know the most about Enoch from is not even from the Genesis account, but from the Jude account. Because Jude actually quotes Enoch, and this is what Enoch was known for his faith for, something he said. Listen to this. Now Enoch, this is Jude 1, 14 and 15. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, now notice this, only seven generations in, prophesied about these men. He's talking about the wicked men of Noah's day saying, behold, the Lord comes with 10,000s of his saints to execute judgment. Now, I just want you to stop for a moment and let that one sink in. You're Enoch. There's only been seven generations born. You've never even met 1,000 people. You might have met 10. It, there might be 10,000 people in the whole world at that time. And he's out there saying, behold, the Lord is coming. Well, who's the Lord? What are you talking about? We've never seen a Bible We've never read the Torah. We've never seen an altar yet. I mean, what are you talking about? We've never heard the, Psalm, the Psalms of David. We've, we've never heard the prophets speak. What are you talking about, Enoch? He's out there saying, behold, the Lord comes. He's going to be flying on horses with 10,000 of his angels and uh, 10,000 of his saints. And I can imagine how preposterous that must have sounded. What are you talking about, old man? Horses can't fly. What are you talking about? This is 3,000 years before Jesus was even born. What are you talking about? The Lord is coming. We don't know anything about the Lord and him coming. What are you talking about? Oh, and 10,000 of his saints. Have you even met 10,000 people? Are there even 10,000 people on the earth right now? And you're telling me that 10,000 people are on a white horse and they're going to come back and execute judgment on the wicked people. And Enoch says, yes, that is what I'm saying it's not a popular message and nobody believes it and you can't understand it but I know what I know because God has revealed this to me Enoch is in the hall of faith because he preached an unpopular message that no one I'm telling you faith talkers are misunderstood they sound like crazy people sometimes because he was saying something that was unfamiliar and uncommon and he stuck to it until the day he was raptured away and can I tell you that on the, sec on the day of the second coming, when those horses get ready to fly, there's going to be Jesus, and there's going to be the saints, and on one of those white horses, oh, Enoch is going to be strapped in and ready for a flight, and I don't know if you'll say I told you so or not, but I'm telling you, he will see with his own eyes what the Lord promised him, because Enoch saw it before it happened, and sometimes people of faith are people that see it before it happens, and and they're going to tell you you've lost your mind. They're going to tell you you're crazy. They're going to tell you that you're in denial. They're going to tell you that you're insane because God has given you a word and you're walking out a word in your spirit and you're trusting in the word and believing in the word and holding on to the word. And it doesn't make sense to anybody around you. But I tell you tonight, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hold on to the unseen hand. And even though it's in the future, you hold on and let God fulfill his word in your life, even if it's not popular, even if you get criticized, if God gave you a word, that's a word from the Lord that's as good as anything, you can take that to the bank, you can write that in your diary, You, God is not a man that he will lie, if God gave it to you, you might be the only one who believes it, but you keep believing it, if it gets you raptured, you keep believing it, just like Enoch, it makes no sense, but you still believe, and God will honor you for what you believe because he gave it to you. I don't know if there's anybody in this room tonight that's holding on to a word just like that. Is there anybody here besides me? I'm holding on to words right now. I just want you to take a moment and say, God, I'm not giving up. I know nobody believes me, but I know what you said. I know when you said it. I still believe in the unchanging hand of God. Can you just take a, a few seconds here and give him praise and let him know you're hanging on. You're hanging on, not to a thread. Oh, no. You're hanging on to a word. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. 
Hallelujah. Well, I feel like preaching tonight. Can you imagine what Enoch must have endured when he preached that message? But verse 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. By the way, that's why I married my wife. Her name is Faith, if you don't know that. <laughs> without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. Okay, let's stop there. He is. Okay, here is the real anchor of faith talkers. They must believe that he is and that he answers prayer. He is. That's the first thing the devil is going to make you doubt. God is real. He is the first two attacks of your faith is God is not real and God does not hear your prayers. He is and he is the rewarder of those who seek him. That's God answering your prayers. So the first attack of your faith is going to be the existence of God. The second attack of your faith is the enemy telling you that God does not answer prayer. Now, I cannot pretend to explain why some prayers don't get answered when you pray them and why some things seem to take a detour when you pray them. I can't begin to explain that, but here's what I do know. I prayed so many prayers that God answered, and I prayed other prayers that God answered later, and I prayed some prayers that God couldn't answer until I was ready to handle the answer, and and I prayed some prayers that I wasn't mature enough to receive the reward until God had to waken me up and mature me a little bit before he could answer prayers. But even then, the Bible tells us there are some who died in the faith believing, but that did not stop it. That did not stop their faith. Their faith went beyond death. It went beyond the grave, and God still answered their prayers because of their faith and their believing. So here's, here's what this passage says. You must believe that God is and that God is the rewarder of those who seek him. I promise you, if your faith is being attacked right now, those are the first two lines of attack. God is not real. It's a psychological crutch. It's something that only weak people need. It's what they'll tell you. God is not real. And secondly, God is not going to answer your prayers. You're not good enough. Anybody got that one before? God's not answering your prayers because he's punishing you. Well, either we believe in grace or we don't. Maybe you're punishing yourself. Because if we believe in the grace of God, grace means that you do get what you don't deserve. And mercy means you don't get what you do deserve. So if we believe in grace and mercy and the cross, don't put Jesus on the cross again. Accept his forgiveness and move on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much for supporting our ministry. If this has blessed you, please say a prayer for us. And if you would like to give, we have four ways that you can do that. You can give online at briancutshaw.com, or if you're a PayPal user, just PayPal us at Church Trainer. Or you can also give through the mail at P.O. Box 267, Georgetown, Tennessee, 37336. Or if you're a Venmo user, you can Venmo us also at Church Trainer. Thank you, and God bless you, and may the Lord multiply your seed. Now back to hope in the word. You have to believe that God is real. All right, verse 7. By the way, we're not going through the whole chapter. But we're going through a lot of it. <laughs> By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things to come, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he was condemned that he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is according to their faith. Now, can you imagine, think about the ridicule old crazy Noah got. I bet that was his nickname. That old crazy Noah has lost his mind. He is talking about rain falling from the heavens. Everybody knows that's impossible. Oh, Noah has lost, he's talking about a flood. There has never been a flood since the beginning of time. Oh, crazy Noah must be out. I mean, we knew he was crazy, but this is even crazier than I thought he was. He is, he's collecting a zoo on a boat. And why does he need a boat? Nobody's ever had a boat. No one's ever built a boat. No one's ever needed a boat. He's not just building a boat. He's building a cruise ship, an animal cruise ship. He is storing, I mean, this man is crazy. His boys are crazy. His daughter-in-laws are crazy. And Mrs. Noah is crazier than he is. Can you just hear that? I know none of you would ever say anything like that. You've never even heard anybody say anything like that, right? P. 
people of faith sometimes get ridiculed because Noah said, God is going to destroy the earth and he's going to rapture my family out of it. I am building a boat. The flood of Noah is a type and shadow of the rapture of the church. I don't have time to get into the three layers of the ark and the only door going in, the window at the top, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I mean, it's all there. It is a type, and I've taught many times that I saw on that. So the Noah's ark is a type and shadow of the rapture of the church, and everybody around him thought, what? You are crazy for believing in the destruction of the earth. One of those old doomsday prophets. One of those old doomsday people that's always predicting how bad it's going to get and how miserable life is going to get. And I'm telling you, they say the same thing right now about anybody who believes in the rapture. I am appalled at how many preachers have stopped believing in the rapture. I am appalled at how many people grew up understanding the rapture and now have turned their eye because it's not a popular message and they don't want to be offensive and they want to embrace their secular crowds around them. And so I can hear the crowds now, and you can hear it. All you got to do is Google it, and you'll see it. They'll say, come on now, for real, a thief in the night? Come on, let's get real. Really, the dead in Christ shall rise and a beam of judgment seat? For real? Are you kidding me? Do you really believe there is a marriage supper of the Lamb? Do you really believe that one day we'll be going about our business and a trumpet will sound and we will be caught up together? To, I mean, do you really believe that's what you're going to hear? Well, I'm here to tell you, I still believe believe it. I believe every word of it. I believe that the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him in the air. I believe that Jesus is coming back just like he said. I believe in the Bema. I believe in the, in the marriage supper of the Lamb and the seven years of tribulation. I believe it's in God's word. I'm not going to back out now. I'm not going to stop believing now. Now, let them say what they want to say. Let them criticize who they want to criticize. But I'm standing flat-footed tonight and declaring to the world, I still believe in the rapture. And I'm still looking for Jesus to come. And I'm still waiting on the trumpet to sound. Does anybody in this room believe in the rapture? I want you to give God praise if you do. I'm still looking for you, Jesus. I'm still looking for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're looking for the Lord, give him praise all across this room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe every word. Verse 8. By faith. Okay, we've come through Abel. Now we're down to, we just got through with Noah. Let's go to Father Abraham. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he would receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. All right, we can, we can just stop right there. You mean, God, you would ask me to do something and not give me all the details? I mean, you, you would invite me into ministry and not tell me that I'm going to see dark days and good days and I'm going to be on the greatest adventure because I love roller coasters and uh, the greatest roller coaster ride of my life. God, God you, you're not tell, you didn't tell me, God, that the devil was going to put a target on my back and I could never make everybody happy because some like it loud and some like it quiet and some like it cold and some like it hot and some want you to preach the fire down and some of you want to give them a nice little love letter from Jesus and, and, and they want this type of song. and I know that's not here, right? They want this type of song and that type of song and I won't praise God until you sing my song and I want it from a hymnal and I want it from the wall and I want it old. and I, want, I mean, God, you didn't tell me all those things would God really invite you into a walk of faith and you were you did not know where you were going we don't use this term a lot anymore but it's called stepping out on faith 
How many of you ever had to step out on faith? Have you ever had to move and just trust God and go somewhere and trust God? Has God ever sent you somewhere where you didn't know anybody? Maybe here. Has God ever sent you somewhere where you didn't know anybody and you have no idea how the story was going to play out? But now as you walk this journey, you see he had treasures for you. He had blessings for you. He had relationships for you. He had anointings for you that you could have never imagined Imagine when God said, step out on faith. This program is brought to you by the partners of Brian Cutshaw and Church Trainer Ministries. Please help us pray that the Lord will continue to send us more partners so we can expand his kingdom around the world.